So, you know, do you have to go through this level of cleaning every single time? Absolutely not, you do not need to. If I was going to, so I was at the range, I'm doing a lot of rounds. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of rounds at the range. What would I do there? Well, I would definitely bring my brushes, I would bring my, definitely bring my bar snake. Um, my Q-tips, oil, um, I'll have that with me. So hey, how's everybody doing? So you're gonna see a little break in the video right there is because I uh, had to do a little bit of a reshoot, a uh, wonderful world of YouTube, uh, camera lost some uh, video, which did not help uh, anything. <laughs> so uh, I just got my slide out of the Sonic Cleaner. We're gonna go ahead and get it cleaned. I was talking about this coating that was done on the gun um, or my slide. Uh, I sent it out for uh, an RMR cut and the company that did it uh, is an absolute, look at, look at, look at, it's actually coming off right now. Look at this crap. Um, the company that did it is a joke. Uh, I'm not going to name them. Um, those that know will know who they are. Uh, I would never have them touch my weapon ever again, uh, let alone order anything from them. They give you attitude. They take a long time. Uh, I think that they just feel they're just entitled. Uh, and they are. I'd actually start calling them out on, on um, Twitter to even get them to respond because they wouldn't answer the phone. They wouldn't call you back. They wouldn't give you status updates. They kept the gun for 90 days and I had a class I had to go to and I told them I had to go to the class before I even sent it and they agreed to it and then just excuses. So uh, just got it out of the Sonic Cleaner and of course it's wet. So, you know, I like to take my little Q-tips and I want to go through all the parts and make sure, you know, I'm as dry as possible. So I've got, you know, my my extractor and I've got my the face of where my firing pin comes out. And I wanna just, you know, get everything as clean. I like to dry out the well, the firing pin, as well as where the extractor goes in. Now, everyone's gonna say, oh my God, you shouldn't have done that. It's gonna have cotton come out in there. No, it's not. As you see, I just push it right through. Uh, one pass, I don't need to go through it multiple times. And I know it's clean. So, uh, Checking everything, everything is basically, you know, really good. Here's the back where, oops, I just broke my, my stick. Um, where we're gonna have, there we go, get that nice and clean. And now because I've got basically a, something I can check with, I can run through the lines. Like I said, you know, this isn't something that everybody needs to do every time. You don't, truly, you don't. But myself, this is what I like to do. Uh, and whenever I know I'm gonna have some downtime, this is what I'm gonna do. Really want to make sure that this face, because this face is where the rounds are going to be sliding, and this is where the ejector, the extractor, and this is where the firing pin is going to strike. So right now everything looks good on that. Let's go through. Uh, we've got our uh, extractor plunger. This is clean. There's really nothing going on with this thing. It was clean before. Uh, I'm quite satisfied with it. We've got our safety plunger. Uh, I'm just taking a look at it. I want to make sure that nothing looks like it might uh, be collecting. Now the areas that uh, I'd be looking at is right around the base here and around the crown. So if you can see around the crown there, see it? Let's get it to focus. Whoop, there we go. Get around the crown there, you can see that there is, you know, there's a little bit of a bevel to it. And I want to make sure that all that's clean. I do not want to pull the spring out, leave the spring where it's at. It's happy where it's at and just leave it there. Uh, here's our firing pit. And you know, I am just gonna basically, just like I did before, before I put it in, I'm just checking, checking around the base. I wanna make sure the firing pin's not gone or broken. Uh, never run into a firing pin actually breaking, but does it happen? Of course it happens. And just gonna go over some things, just clean it. It is extremely clean coming out of the Sonic Cleaner. Uh, we've got our now our extractor. And just like we said before, you know, this is the area right here. This is the area. That's where the rounds are going to be grabbed and come out. So I just want to make sure that's clean. Just going through, take my Q-tip. Just a little bit of carbon, but that's well within the area of good enough. And I, like, I love my nylon brushes. 
Now, do I think there's anything on there when I'm going over it? No, I don't think there's anything on it at all, but I just want to go over it to make sure. Uh, this is our spring for our plunger. Obviously, here is the main recoil spring. And I'm just, I'm just brushing. There's nothing, there's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. It's fine. And now we've got our barrel. <clears throat> and you know, there's a, there's a lot of different things we can use. I've got um, a couple different options here. I've got these tornado brushes. Um, you know, you've got your standard, you know, brass. But if you, one thing with brass, you know, when you pack these, that these get all bent and twisted and matted down. These tornado brushes work really, really well. And what I want to do is I just want to follow the path of the bullet. And let's take a look in there and see what it looks like. Let's get you, let's get a light so you can see better. A little bit of a light in there. Let's cover this. Whoop, not too much. A little less. You can see, it's pretty clean. Pretty happy with that. Um, but because I'll have a, I have a set pattern the way I do it, I'll use this as the first run through to get the majority, to get the big stuff, because it does have a much better uh, uh, retention level on not degrading as quickly as a normal brass brush. Look at all that powder. Look at it. Can you see it? Let's see if you can see it. Can you see it? I can see it. It's just coming out of there because it was just getting all that extra carbon out of there. Now, I have my little cotton swab. Let's run this through there. Look at all that. See it? Let's take a look. Uh, there's just, there is just a little bit in there. I can still see it. Let me see here. Yep. So <clears throat> another thing that I use, and I get, you know, you get people all the time like, you should never use that because it never does it. <laughs> Whatever. Boar snake. Love it. So boar snake has obviously this, um, it's a woven material, but then in the middle, it has right here. I don't know if you can see it. Let's get it to focus. Can you see it? The little, I'm losing the focus. There's a little, little, uh, uh, um, what's what I'm looking for? Um, like brass on there. That's going to allow it. Ah. That was the boar snake for my rifle. <laughs> get you the, the right one. Uh, same one though. You can see, see on the, the brass on there, it's built in. So what I can do is, now always follow the path of the bullet. And people go, well, why do you do that? Why do you gotta follow the path of the bullet? Well, there's a very distinct reason for that. The reason why you follow the path of the bullet because right here, where the round's gonna come out, if I was going to constantly, say I'm running a, you know, a brush and I'm going in and out, in and out, in and out, I'm always going to the bottom here, right? What's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna very finely start to wear the way that this round is, and the gases are gonna expand around the round, which means they're gonna come out more here when the bullet comes out and it's gonna make it go higher. When it comes out from the bottom, it's gonna push it up. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we do not, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's like glass. We wanna make sure that we do not do that. So follow the, follow the path of the bullet. It's much better. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that? It's pretty clean. And yes, I do go for that mirror finish. That just is the way it is. That's how I do it. That's how I always do it. I'm gonna to continue to do it. And too bad, so sad. <clears throat> Alrighty. So now, one thing that I do like to use is I use compressed air. Same stuff you'd get from your, uh, uh, clean your computer. And people say, well, we don't use compressed air because you're gonna blow all this condensation into your gun and it's gonna make it so bad and it's gonna blah, 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 blah. Shut up. It's not going to hurt your gun. It's not going to hurt your gun at all. It's not going to do anything to your gun. All I'm doing is I'm just getting out any fine particles, any lint, anything that I don't want in my gun. It's going to work just fine. Your gun can shoot under water. It can shoot wet. It can shoot salty. This, this little compressed air isn't going to hurt it. So the man who says that, uh, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to stick with that as the answer. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this back together and... <clears throat> obviously in the reverse order. And I wanna make sure that everything is working together the way it should. 
And one of the first things I want to do is I want to put in my safety plunger and my extractor. Two things, really easy. This is just going to go here. Now, do these need to be oiled? No. Now, if I was going to be in a salty condition, uh, I knew I was going to be in, I might just put start to put real thin coats of oil on these uh, just, to, just to keep them in the best possible condition just because I know that rust comes quickly and I've done a lot of cleaning because of rust. So let's put in our extractor. Oops, I'm going to go this way. Put our extractor plunger, put your plunger in first, push it down and then push your extractor in and then it holds. If you do it the other way, not going to work. Now we are going to go for our Let's slide that in there. Just goes in, it's gonna stick out. You see how it's sticking out? Right there. We're gonna to have to push that down when we put our back plate on, uh, here. Now I'm gonna put my firing pin in. Do I, do I oil my firing pin? No, 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 no. If I start to put oil on the firing pin in the channel that it sits in, as the carbon builds up, it's gonna to start to turn to gummy, gooey goo and that will turn around and make it very difficult for the weapon to fire and it'll start to cause misfires. I do not want that. So now we're going to, one or the, <coughs> sorry, we're gonna go one after the other, all right? So we're first gonna go ahead and we're gonna push down on the little channel liner, which is just this little plastic piece in the back. And then we're gonna go ahead and push down on our uh, ejector spring and eject. Let me just try my finger. No, not gonna work. So let's follow this down. And as I'm pushing down on it, I'm pushing in at the same time. So as it clears, it'll start, it'll close the gap. And I also want to keep my finger over it in case it pops out. There it goes. So I filled the gap, now it's in. Now we're just gonna go ahead and follow by pushing in. And there we go, we're in. Does it look like it works? Yes, let's push down our plunger. And we're gonna again, watch our firing pin. Push out, there's our firing pin coming out and locking. Pushing in and locking. Alrighty, perfect. <clears throat> From there, besides putting in our uh, uh, recoil spring and our barrel, we're effectively done with our slide assembly. So we're just gonna go ahead, barrel goes in an angle. Remember, we're gonna slide it in, barrel sits. From there, remember where the spring goes, okay? Spring is gonna sit on the bottom, not up here. Bottom, because that's you see how it's got the little concaveness. It's got the little circle cut into it, right there, right there. That's where it goes. So let's not put it in the wrong place, people. And we just got a little plunger that rests right in there. All right, got them all together. There we go. All together, all done. Uh, I will put some oil on it. We'll do it once we do put it back together. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna set this one aside. So now we're gonna go ahead and finish with the frame and putting all of it back together. So we've got, <laughs> we've got parts everywhere. We've got our locking block. We've got our slide lock. We've got our pins, and we've got our trigger assembly. Now. I did not take the trigger assembly apart. Um, I'm just gonna, again, just gonna brush it. Just one of those things, you know, even though I know I've gone over it, I just have this thing where I just, even if I see nothing, I still do it. You know, call it a tick, call it a, a nervous habit. It's just something that I do. Uh, when I know that I'm cleaning my weapons, I wanna make sure, I just wanna make sure everything is good. All right, so it looks like not seeing anything of any consequence on any of this. It looks good. Okay, so I am going to, and you see it, this is, this is its firing. So I'm gonna be putting this uh, back in the weapon and <clears throat> I wanna make sure, um, I did go over this before. Uh, I'm just kind of doing my last little uh, run over it before I put it, because once I close it, it's closed. So I just want to make sure, yes, I know it's clean. I know everything's good. One of the spots that you really, really, really want to keep looking at is right here, 
right around where the magazine releases. For some reason, I noticed in a lot of weapons, a spot, this spot right here gets a lot of carbon. You get a lot of uh, gunpowder too that gets in there. And you'll just see the little particles uh, all over there. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back together. Uh, I am gonna put a little bit of oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People can complain all they want. I don't really care because this is what I do. So I've got a little hinge. Now this is, these are great, these are great. They got a little, little tiny little needle. I'm gonna put a little drop right there. That's a pivot point. I am going to put a little drop under, there's a spring under here. I'm gonna put a little bit of drop on that spring. That's it. You don't even see it. That's how small it is. Alrighty, and you can see how it's lubricated through. You see it come under? That's lubricated, just a drop. That's all it needs, just a drop. All right, so this will slide right back in. So it goes in towards the back. It's all rested in there. There's our trigger. Everything looks good. Now, I wanna put my locking block. Now the locking block is just gonna slide in. It slides in right, and it sits in between where the trigger is. That's the trigger right there. And when you look at the safety of the trigger, now watch it remove. See it come out right there, a little, that's right here. It's right here. That's one of the safety features of the Glock, is that little safety feature. And what it does is, it removes, there's a little, show you here. Right from underneath there. Let's give you more light. Let's see if you can see it. Right, ooh, 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 ooh. Right there. So you can see, there's a little bar, and that bar, let's get this down. Get that all the way in there, hold it down. When that bar, it's not able to allow the trigger to go back. This is the safety right there. Just sticking up, okay? All right, so now we are going to put in, this is our, our uh, uh, slide lock. And what you're looking for is, is this. You see the lineup? See the lineup so the pins can go through? That's what you wanna look for. So when I'm looking through here, I can see everything's in. I wanna put, put my big guy in first. It moved, I felt it, I felt it move. No, it's lined up. There we go. Now, this is going to be our locking block pin and you will see it, it will fit right behind, see it going in right there? It goes right behind the locking block. And what it does is it, once again, locks it in place. So it can't come out. Those two are in. <clears throat> now, we've got our last pin in the back. Let's see if you can see through there. See it? And slide it up, come on. There we go. That's what I want. We'll put that in. And I want it to be recessed. I want, you don't, you see how it's got a little extra space there? I, and this is the part that's the hardest, is trying to put that in just enough so it sits on surface. And these aren't quite as even, so I'm gonna be doing that ridiculous fight back and forth to try and get it in. Just, to, I mean, I'm talking like a millimeter. Okay, that's all working. Okay, so we've got our uh, frame assembly together. We've got our slide together. Now we're looking at what are my oil, now look, it's just, I'm just neurotic about it. I'm just looking. I don't, there's nothing I see. I just, I just, that's what I do. Got my rag. You know, I'm gonna give it one quick wipe down. It's looking good. So where do I put the oil? Now, I put it in a couple different places, very, very minute. I'm gonna put one little drop right along this trigger bar right here. That's it, right there. And I'm just gonna work it in. There it is. Looking good. Now, I also put a drop of oil on these little tabs. This is where the slide is going to be rubbing. These little tabs here. There it is, that's it, that's it. Yep, 
<clears throat> and on the slide, do I put new oil on it? No, not at this particular point. I put nothing on it. I used to put oil down the grooves. I don't need to. Uh, Glocks like to run really dry, uh, so I don't need to. So I'm gonna put it back together. Now we're gonna test it. Okay, I've got a good cycle. I'm gonna push up on my slide lock, lock it to the rear. Now I'm inspecting. How do we look? We look good, we look good, we look good. Now, where do I put oil? I put oil right here, right on the very front of the barrel. And I put a nice little drab on there. Now, why do I do that? Because when I cycle it, what I'm doing is I am lubricating the top portion on the inside of the slide right here. That's where I want it because that's where it's going to be running. And it's just me. There you go. The old 1911s, I would put a nice little sheen of oil on the outside. Uh, they do rust easily and uh, they definitely do around the ocean. Uh, so I would go ahead and coat all that. Now, Safeties. Once you do re reassemble your weapon, you're going to want to make sure that you reassemble it correctly. What are the safeties you want to check? One, we want to check to make sure that the trigger safety is working. So, weapon is cocked. All right. I'm going to pull on just the outside. Nothing. Now, when I pull on the middle, I should hear a click. There's the click. Now, go ahead and cycle it again. I'm going to check the decocking. I'm gonna basically take it out of battery, try and pull the trigger. You can see, out of battery. I don't wanna do that. Not working. In battery, click. Last one. There is a drop safety, which is right in the rear here. We can't get to it, um, but I'm just gonna, I'm just feeling the function of the weapon as it goes in and out of battery. And that's it. That's, that's it. So, you know, do you have to go through this level of cleaning every single time? Absolutely not. You do not need to. If I was going to, uh, um, so I was at the range. I'm doing a lot of rounds. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of rounds at the range. What would I do there? Well, I would definitely bring my brushes. I would bring my, uh, uh, um, definitely bring my boar snake. Um, my Q-tips, oil. Um, I'll have that with me. And if I was just going to quickly say I'm still on the range, um, I'm not off the range. I'm not going to, you know, it's in between firing. If I wanted to, I could drop my boar snake while the gun's still together. Get it to fall all the way through. It'd be great. Oh, not even in the barrel. Duh. Come on, baby. There we go. And while I'm just waiting, I can just give it a real quick pull through. Just like that. I don't have to break it down. If I know that I'm there, I can drop a little extra oil on the top of the barrel. And if I needed to, I can drop oil down these tracks right here while I'm at the range. I can put a little drop here, put a little drop there, hold the gun up, let it start to go ahead and cycle its way down the slide and just cycle it. And get the gun lubricated. That's why I'm just on the range. I'm, I'm shooting a lot of rounds. I just want to help maintain the gun. Um, that's really, you know, I'll have a rag with me, but that's really, that's really it. I mean, you don't really need to do more um, the, the level of breakdown we just did there is not necessary for all the times, but for me, it's what I do when I know I'm not going to be at the range for a while and I'm breaking down my weapon and I want to make sure that it's put away in the uh, manner at which I know it's conditioned at all times. You know, if you guys are liking the content, feel free to definitely hit the like and subscribe right down there below. Um, we're going to be putting out some great new contact next month, our content, sorry next month uh, that uh, hopefully you guys are going to like. Um, we're going to go over some very detailed topics of what's going on in the world today and you know would love to hear what you guys think about that. But as always, on time, on target, never quit. Hoo-yah.